today we're going to talk about thyroglossal cyst and fistula so first we'll discuss about thyroglossal cyst so this is a picture showing a simple thyroglossal cyst you can see in the midline location the cystic nature so thyroglossal cyst it is a cystic swelling occurring in the neck along the line of the thyroglossal tract it develops due to failure of complete obliteration of the thyroglossal duct so the thyroglossal duct is a structure that obliterates completely and due to some reason if it doesn't obliterate during a, at a portion of the tract that will form a cyst so it is a congenital anomaly but usually presents later in life it is a tubular dermoid type of congenital cyst sometimes thyroid may not be present at its normal site in such a case the wall of the thyroglossal cyst will be containing the thyroid tissue so in such a case if you remove the cyst you may have done a thyroidectomy as well because the normal thyroid gland is not present and is present only within the wall of the thyroglossal cyst so that has to be searched for prior to planning surgery so this is a diagram you can see the tongue this dotted line is the tract represents the thyroglossal tract so here is a foramen cecum that's one end it goes commonly uh, just closely adjacent to the hyoid bone then dips down and comes towards the isthmus of the gland so and the simple diagram represents the same thing this is a cut section of the mandible this is the hyoid bone this is the thyroid cartilage and you can see the foramen cecum coming and the tract going down and entering up to the isthmus of the thyroid gland so the pathology uh, a thyroglossal cyst is lined by pseudo stratified ciliated columella epithelium and contains mucus fluid the common locations are beneath the foramen cecum in the floor of the mouth suprahyoid subhyoid and on the thyroid cartilage now of these the subhyoid location is the most common location of a thyroglossal cyst so another diagram showing the various sites you can see one is at the foramen cecum the floor of the mouth can and this is a suprahyoid location subhyoid location and this is the in front of the thyroid cartilage other locations are also there but they are rare so it can appear at any age but is mostly seen in the 15 to 30 years age group it usually presents as a cystic swelling that means it's a soft fluctuant with so swelling with a smooth surface it is non tender it is mobile sideways only it, it 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 can be moved transversely from side to side it has no vertical mobility and it's a typical swelling in the midline of the neck now two characteristic features is that because of its attachment to the foramen cecum it moves with deglutition just like the thyroid gland secondly it also moves on the protrusion of tongue so if you feel if you hold the gland or the cyst and when you protrude the tongue out you will feel a tug a tugging sensation is felt now when the cyst is infected it is tender with induration of the surrounding skin so this here is the thyroglossal cyst midline location cystic soft fluctuant smooth surface movement and deglutition movement and protrusion of tongue and infected you can see the erythema localized rise in temperature tenderness and surrounding edema and erythema and induration complications include infection malignancy as i mentioned earlier that it may contain thyroid tissue in such a case papillary carcinoma thyroid is one malignancy that can develop similarly it can form a thyroglossal fistula if it ruptures or if an ind is done or if surgery is done and something is is remaining behind it can end up with a acquired thyroglossal fistula Now the differential diagnosis includes uh, other swellings which are in the midline of the neck. So some of the common ones are the submental lymph node, sublingual dermoid cyst, a regular dermoid cyst, subhyoid bursa, solitary nodule of the thyroid, lipoma, and other uh, swellings are also there. These are the common ones. The investigation one is FNAC for histological diagnosis. Then ultrasound of the neck will help in imaging. 
you can do the T3, T4, TSH to make sure that your youth are out. Now here, uh, an additional test known as a radioisotope study is done to make sure that there is the normal thyroid gland in its location and, it is, and that the, uh, to make sure that there is a normal thyroid gland in the individual prior to planning surgery such as excision of the thyroglossal cyst. Because sometimes, I told you earlier, that the cyst wall may contain the only thyroid tissue in the individual. The treatment is surgery and the name is cyst trunk operation. It involves excision of the cyst and the tract up to the foramen cecum along with the central part of the hyoid bone. Now if there is no normal thyroid gland after surgery then you have to supplement uh, uh, a maintenance dose of lifelong oral thyroxine in order to keep the patient youth thyroid. So this is the incision. The typical one is uh, directly over the cyst but you can put it on the upper part of the cyst. This is the specimen. You can see the cyst, the tract and the hyoid bone attached to it, the central part of the hyoid bone. That is the cyst trunk operation. Now we will move on to the next session that is thyroglossal fistula. Thyroglossal fistula is an acquired condition. Unlike a branchial cyst and a branchial fistula, the thyroglossal fistula is usually an acquired condition. It follows bursting of an infected thyroglossal cyst or post IND of an infected thyroglossal cyst or after inadequate rem removal of the thyroglossal cyst. In all of these cases, you may have an external opening which is discharging pus or serosanguinous discharge. It is almost always associated with a congenital abnormality that is persistence of the thyroglossal tract. It is lined by columnar epithelium. Now the opening of the fistula is characteristically covered by a hood of skin that is known as a hood sign. And there is always either continuous or intermittent discharge of mucus. And usually it is a site of recurrent inflammation. So what are the clinical features? There is usually a history of a pre-existing swelling which either burst or was drained by a surgical procedure. Patient gives history of recurrent episodes of pain over the fistula, especially near the opening of the fistula, which gets relieved once it starts discharging. The site of the fistula is usually midline in the neck and may be suprahyoid or subhyoid. The hood sign which I mentioned earlier is seen in the case of thyroglossal fistula. Now, one characteristic feature here is that the fistula gets pulled up on protrusion of the tongue. So you can see a dimpling of the or the a pulling sensation, pulling a pull up of the opening of the fistula. Investigations again, you have to do a thyroid function test to assess the thyroid status and FNAC. If there is a swelling there, a radioisotope study will be helpful in detecting whether there is a normal thyroid gland. Now, for the fistula, if it's a typical case of fistula with a straightforward discharging sinus, you can go ahead and do a fistula gram which will help uh, delineate the tract of the fistula. An ultrasound neck or a CT neck, CT fistulogram, MR fistulogram, these are other tests which will help in imaging and to assess the length, the, the relation to the adjacent structures of the fistula tract. The surgery is similar to that of the thyroglossal cyst. You do the cyst trunks operation. Here, inside the cyst, the opening, the sinus opening along with the tract up to the foramen cecum and the central part of the hyoid bone is excised or removed. You can see the fistless opening here. You can see the tugging or the dimpling around that opening on protrusion of the tongue. So thank you for your patient hearing.